excited for today's video as I'm actually in Sacramento, California with my good friend Nitin's 718 Spider here for the day. So he has graciously lent me this car. So thank you very much to him. Now, this is my first video of other people's Porsches and bringing you guys really unique and cool cars as well as some stories. So if you know anyone that has a really unique Porsche or cool Porsche story, please go ahead and leave it down in the comments below or send me an email at pcarwhisper at gmail.com. This isn't gonna be the standard video uh, in terms of a review of a 718 Spider, as that's not really what my channel is about and there is plenty of those videos out there. But we're actually gonna be comparing this car to the newly released Spider RS. And is that car worth the additional maybe two to three times the price of this car, as this car packs a lot of punch in its price point. So let's go ahead and go over what are some of the differences between the Spider and the Spider RS. So before we really get into it with this car, I wanna take a quick moment to talk about the history of the mid-engine sports car at Porsche. So the very first mid-engine sports car was the 356 number one in 1948. So that kind of started to pave the way for these mid-engine sports cars. 1953, Porsche releases its first purposely built race car, which was the 550 Spider that came and was very, very successful at Targa Florio, Le Mans. So that car really paved the way for Porsche in racing. After that, we had the 550A was an update to the 550, more power, a little bit lighter weight, better chassis. After that came the first iteration of the 718, and that was the 718 RS60 Spider and the 718 RSK. Those cars were also very, very successful in racing and really, like I said, paved the way for Porsche and racing. Then there was a lot of other mid-engines as well, not necessarily race cars, but we had the 914. We then also had the uh, 986, which helped save Porsche in the mid, uh, early 90s. The 987 Cayman, that was actually the first generation that had a Boxster Spider, and then 981, and now we're on to this beautiful car. So there is a lot of history of the mid-engine with Porsche and racing, and this car is no different. So that is what is very exciting to me about mid-engine sports cars, is they have a, a sweet spot in my heart, is they have a lot of racing prowess with Porsche. Now, let's go ahead and take this car for a quick spin. Talk about some of the differences between the body, the chassis compared to the Spider RS, the power plant. So let's go ahead and fire this puppy up so you guys can hear what she sounds like. You guys can hear that glorious four liter. Sounds pretty damn good. It's a four liter, 414 horsepower, just over 300 foot pounds of torque based on the Carrera motor, but it's actually bored out because that car is a three liter up to a four liter. And you know what? Get rid of those turbochargers on this car, naturally aspirated, which to me is the best sounding car. Now, how does that differ from the Spider RS? Well, that car is actually based on the GT3 Cup car and has even more horsepower, 493 horsepower, 330 foot pounds of torque. So as good as this car sounds, that car is gonna probably sound a little bit better and it's also gonna have a little bit more induction noise, very similar to the GT4 RS. That car has a box in the back, so it kind of keeps it in the cabin. But on the Spider RS, you have these uh, vents there on the side that are right where the convertible top goes to. This car almost feels at home. For those of you who've been watching my YouTube channel for quite some time, I actually, one of my very first videos was a top operation video on a 718 Spider. So this kind of brings me back, kind of takes us full circle. Now. On the Spider RS, it's gonna come standard with a PDK transmission. This car has the option of it as it, this Spider comes with a six-speed manual transmission. Now, what does Porsche do to the body of this RS variant to help save about 59 pounds, which is a decent amount of weight? Well, they actually have carbon fiber reinforced fenders as well as the front hood. Now, we're also gonna have NACA ducts in the front hood of the Spider RS. Now, the suspension is where we're gonna see a pretty big difference as well. On this car, it's derived from the 991.2 GT3. We've got nice big steel brakes up front. They're 380 millimeters in the front, 
380 millimeters in the rear for the cast iron variant. Now the Spider RS, standard with cast iron brakes, option carbon ceramic brakes. Now where this car has all bushings, the Spider RS is gonna have ball joints. So that's gonna even give us more of a point and shoot feel even more than this car. And this car already is a very point and shoot car. So it's gonna be very interesting. I hope at some point I get a chance to drive one of those cars and feel the difference. But I can tell you, this car is already very, very special in the handling aspects of the car and the sound. Wow. The sound is pretty drastic. Now, on the Spider RS, we're gonna have a titanium exhaust. So, like I said, probably even gonna sound a little bit louder than this car. But is all this price point gonna be worth the additional price of the Spider RS? Well, Spider RS starts at about 160,000 US dollars, but we got the Visoc package, which gives us fully exposed carbon and has uh, the option to get magnesium wheels. So that stuff's gonna help lighten it up. Again, like I said, 59 pounds, but is it almost two to three times better than the 718 Spider? Having a hard time believing <laughs> that that car is gonna be that much better. Like I said, of course, the sound is gonna be glorious. But as you guys can tell, the sound of this car is already fantastic. Price points on these cars, when they came out in 2020, actually started in the mid 90s with options you're looking at a little over $100,000. This particular car is at $127,000. It has a lot of nice bits. We got the full leather interior, the race tech seat centers. We even have the steering column in full leather. So it's got some stuff you never really see. Cast iron brakes in black. So. Price points on the Spider RS are gonna be 160. That's before you even get any options. So the Visoc package is gonna add about $30,000 and uh, that's gonna be quite a bit. Plus market adjustments on those cars, we're probably looking at 50 to $75,000. So before you know it, you're gonna be at a 250,000, maybe almost $300,000 uh, Spider. And let's be honest, there's a lot of people taking their Spiders to the track and doing a racetrack, or is this car just as comparable as it is a beautiful cruiser for the street? So something that we have to kind of think about, this car's low 100s and we're looking at, you know, 250 plus on a Spider RS. And like I said, this car is very point and shoot already and sounds <laughs> absolutely amazing. So um, what are gonna be some of the other differences we're gonna find on the Spider RS? Um, the convertible top is going to be different. So with the 718 Spider, we have a manual and automatic aspect. Some people don't like it, but I love it because this gives us the history of Porsche having a little bit of a manual top. Also gives us the ability to have these beautiful uh, humps in the back, which actually throws us back to the early 718s as well. Now on the Spider RS, it's actually going to save 16 pounds with that top. No automatic portion of that top. It's actually going to be all manual. There's some videos floating around with Andreas Pointinger where he's actually doing the top and it's pretty quick and he's telling a lot of us to stop whining about the manual top portion as this is Porsche and it's bringing us back to our lineage as we just talked about with the 718s uh, being that manual aspect. So, wow, unbelievable. You can hear the sound of this car is already absolutely glorious. So again, where does the price point come in for the Spider RS compared to this car? Now this car has PASM, very similar to the Spider RS. It's gonna drop the car about 30 millimeters. Uh, it's not gonna, of course, have those ball joints we talked about and give it even more of a precision uh, feel. Not quite as aggressive of the GT4 RS. It's almost as if the 718 Spider and the GT4 RS had a kid that would be the Spider RS in terms of suspension. We also have a limited slip differential in the back and Porsche torque vectoring. Now, what does that do? Well, as we're going around those bends, it's gonna break that inner brake, really help us pull us around. Now, it's a beautiful day today here in Sacramento and uh, we're going through these canyon roads and I'd be hard pressed to feel that the price difference is gonna feel twice as much fun as this car, as this car feels, sounds amazing. That PDK transmission is ever so snappy 
in this car. So just wanted to give you guys a quick uh, difference there in the Spider RS. There's more differences, but that's just kind of a quick um, high level difference in both of those cars. Now, as you guys can already tell, I'm already kind of pushing for the 718 Spider. So I feel like this car is a lot of bang for your buck. Now, what does this particular car have that maybe other 718s don't have? Well, it's of course in the beautiful racing yellow and uh, that makes it pop. We have the rollover bars are gonna be in that racing yellow. We've got that optional PDK transmission, which is so fast. Revs to 8,000 RPMs, that was glorious. Now, the Spider RS revs to 9,000, so we have a little bit higher rev, so you're gonna get a little bit louder sound there. Man, it sounds good. Now we've got the full leather interior. We even have the steering column in full leather. We've got the beautiful race tech steering wheel, which makes it feel very sporty. Of course, we've got sport exhaust on the Spider. The sports chrono package was standard, so I think that's an awesome add. We've got the PD Crease Sport with the auto blip function. Man, that sounds beautiful. Now we've got the cast iron brakes in uh, high gloss black, which I think looks really aggressive on this car. Uh, we've got the heated seats. We've even got the climate control in leather. Don't see that very often. Both surround sound for when you don't want to listen to that harmonious engine. We have that, which of course sounds great. You know, things like Apple CarPlay, those are almost a must. Of course, this car has it. Wow. Man, that handling's good. The sound is unbelievable on this car. It was a special car. Yeah, it was 8,000. You can feel how aggressive it is. So, long story short, I don't want to make this video too long for you guys, but I feel like the Spider RS is going to be amazing. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's going to be two to three times better than this because this car is very hard to beat. So again, if you guys know anybody that has Porsches that maybe you would like to have their car featured on my channel, please reach out to me as I love hearing new Porsche stories, driving new Porsche cars, and bringing you guys the best of Porsche. So thank you, Nitin, again for letting me borrow your spider for the day. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.